So today we're going to be checking out the legendary Canon A1. The Canon A1 is a seminal camera. The reason it's so important is because back in 1978, it was the first commercially available camera that would give you an auto exposure, program exposure mode. It could also give you aperture priority, shutter priority and manual mode, but this new auto exposure mode allowed the absolute novice, someone who'd never really used a camera, to pick up a camera and get a reasonable exposure on a film without having to even think about it. So to use this camera is actually really simple. We turn it on with this switch up here and we can check how much battery there is with this little button here. To use the exposure modes, you load the film as normal. It loads normally like most cameras do. And then you would tell the camera your ISO. So there's a little black notch there and you spin this round until you get the right ISO. You have your exposure modes on here. So you've got the square, which is fully auto, TV, which is shutter priority, AV, which is aperture. And when you look through the viewfinder, you've actually got numbers. Now this means a lot to me. It's very sort of Stranger Things kind of early 80s. So normally when I do one of these videos, I do a shoot with the camera and I check it out and I tell you what I think and hopefully take some good pictures. For this particular video, we're going to have to go back in time a few weeks. So something that's really popular on Instagram right now, Gregory Crudson copies, where they put someone next to a car in an open space, possibly under an electricity pylon or next to a railway line. So that was the plan anyway. Unfortunately, on this particular occasion though, what could go wrong did go wrong. We got there a little bit late, so I found myself shooting in the dark on 100 ASA film. And to add to that, the batteries in my flash packs decided that they were going to die. So I found myself shooting on 100 ASA film at night with just a couple of LED panels to light it. I managed to get a couple of pictures on the digital Canon because I could just up the ISO. But unfortunately, even pushing the film to 800, which is about as far as I would ever push it, I really didn't get what I was looking for. So I was gonna have to come back and do it again. It's actually the first time that I have actually used a Canon film camera, which seems amazing. But when I was a kid, I used to use Nikons. And when everything went digital and I started shooting professionally, I was using the Canon 5D range. And Often I'd assist photographers or I'd listen to my dad and they'd say, Canon cameras are just a rip off of Nikon. They're not as good um, and they have bad glass. I'm happy to tell you having used this camera that that is entirely not the case. I think this is as good as any Nikon that I've used. It's been a strange year. Between lockdowns, work has been absolutely intense. I wasn't able to redo the first shoot straight away. What I thought I would do is take the Canon on the road with me and just take pictures as I went. So that's me locked and loaded with one of the earliest auto exposure cameras. So uh, let's see what we get. I made a point of only using the Canon on automatic modes, which normally makes me really nervous because I'm a bit of a control freak. But actually, I was really surprised when I got the results back that it does a really good job. This camera will give you a really nice exposure in its pre-programmed aperture and shutter priority modes. Unless you've got like a really heavy backlight situation, then it's gonna struggle a little bit. But generally speaking, if you've got fairly even light, you're gonna get a really good exposure just on automatic, which for a camera built in the late 70s is really quite impressive. The one thing though that I have noticed about this camera so far is that it's got the dreaded Canon shutter sneeze. So that's going to need fixing. Now, some people tell me this is to do with the way the shutter is binding as it moves across. Um, but other people tell me that it's just the gears in the mirror box, which need lubricating once in a while. So that's what we're going to do now. So in order to lubricate the gears in here, you need a syringe with a bit of a tap on the end of it and some watch or sewing machine oil. This is a Pegasus watch oil. You need the right screwdriver. So first thing we need to do is take the lens off 
then we need to remove the four screws holding this cover on. There is a way of doing it, taking the bottom cover off and going up, but I find it easier just to go in from the front. So we've got one, two, three, and four screws that need to come out. Helps if you have a magnetic screwdriver. There's always one stubborn screw, isn't there? There are in fact a number of really good tutorials that go into more detail on how to do this. The best one I think is by a YouTube channel called Fix Old Cameras. And the worst one is some prat that fills his camera with WD-40. So before you remove this plate, make sure you know where your switches are. So it's the silver one at the bottom and the black one at the top. So just gently lift this off. I said gently, there we go. And you're gonna to need to remove this um, screw that holds the lens ring on to get access to the mirror box. Now the next bit's a bit tricky because you have to do it blind and you really don't want to put too much oil into your camera. Because that's all you really need is one drop of oil. So just go gently on it. So put it through the hole and do it so that you know that you're getting in and down. So you're going in there and you're gonna go down. You want these gears here to bring your mirror up. Maybe more than one drop. But that is the sound of success. For the end of this video, we thought we'd get the beginning right. So the camera's working, the flash guns are working, and the car got here. So I've got an opportunity to put right what went wrong in the beginning. Photography is a journey, and when things don't work out, it's frustrating. And that frustration can keep you from pushing yourself. But know this, frustration is really just the pain of learning what you don't know. And it's easy to retreat into absolutes like the technical aspects of photography. You could be a great technical photographer, but take boring ass pictures. Because the greats in photography are those that can produce images that arrest the viewer and that's much, much harder to learn. The second shoot felt a lot less like copying the greats in a vain attempt to level up fast and a lot more like understanding the influences and putting them together in a way that just helps me go a few steps on my own journey. And the Canon in all of that is a camera that if you're a vintage camera collector, you should definitely own. And if you're thinking of just getting your first film camera, you should get it because it's a camera that just doesn't get in the way. So if you like this video, check out some of the other videos on the channel and hit the subscribe button if you want to know when new videos come out.